Whenever you're traveling to a foreign country, one of the things that you think about on a consistent basis up to the day that you take off and even the day that you land, if it's different, is where should I go? Now, in some cities, you're going to stay just within that city. And in some cities, you're going to try to go outside of it. And Medina, Mexico is one of those cities where you can stay in, you can go out. There are all kinds of different places from Mayan ruins to cenotes to the beach. But the colonial city of Medina, Mexico has a bunch of places that expats and just travelers in general probably should take a look at. And in this video, what we're going to talk about are just a few things that within the city are some of the most tourist friendly places that you can take a look at. And maybe one or two that if you're considering being an expat, uh, they're, they're just kind of for the gringos. So let's roll the intro. So just to quickly get this out there, my name is Alexander Howell, and this channel is about travel and real estate, especially when it comes to Mexico, the state of Yucatan, and especially the city of Medina, Mexico, which we're going to talk about a lot today. Now, my wife and I ended up traveling to the city, did a bit of a sabbatical with our kids, and ended up absolutely falling in love with it. And so we bought a property there, something that we'd been thinking about doing for about a decade before. And after a long renovation, thanks to COVID, we now have a place in Medina, Mexico, and absolutely love it. In fact, it's 2023. Uh, July is when you guys are going to be seeing this and we're about to travel there now. So very happy to finally get back and in retirement, that is going to be the place that we spend between six and eight months every single year. The city is amazing. And through our time going there, I've realized that there are certain areas where people go to constantly and I want to talk to you about a few of them. There are a lot more. So if you want to hear about a lot more of those, please feel free to subscribe to this channel, hit that notification bell. That's going to let you know anytime one of these videos goes live. And if you end up sticking around and like this video, just click the like button. I'd really appreciate it. If you have questions, comment down below or hit me up. My text number is 816-727-7740 or alexander at alexanderhowell.com. And obviously on social media and stuff like that, at Alexander from KC. Again, all of that is down below. So let's keep going. Now, the first one is really the first place. It's called Plaza Grande. This is a beautiful one square block park and it is literally the epicenter of the city. This is where the Mayan city of Tijo was centered. Unfortunately, knocked down once the Spanish conquistadors came in and then it was revitalized into what we know today as Plaza Grande. If you search Medina, Mexico, the number one picture you're going to see is the Merida Cathedral or the Cathedral de San Ildefonso. Now, I've done a whole video on this and a couple of other things. You just want to check it out right there. But it has that government buildings, the governor's palace, the founder of the city, Francisco de Montejo, his house, even though it's not as big as it used to be, is in that square. So this is the number one place to be. And I will tell you that it's a wonderful place when you go in the middle of the day. It's also fantastic at night. So check it all out. The next is Paseo de Montejo. Now, you might think that that rings the bell with Francisco, and yes, that is who it is absolutely named after. It is a boulevard that is absolutely beautiful, and it extends a long way throughout Merida, but not down to Plaza Grande, so you're going to have to walk a little bit to check it out. But it is the most famous street in this city, and it houses all of these beautiful, large buildings that were built in the late 18 to early 1900s. And that is because there was a substance called a henequen that was grown throughout the state of Yucatan, and that actually, for a time made Merida the per capita city with the most millionaires in the entire world. One substance, lots of big buildings. I've got a whole history on it again. Check out the videos on my channel. But because of that one substance, all of these mansions were built. Now there are a few that are still privately owned. However, most of them have been converted into commercial space. They've been banks. They have restaurants or shops, whatever it might be. But it is still a beautiful boulevard to go down, especially on a hot day because it has a ton of trees, kills the heat a little bit, and you can actually enjoy a nice run, a nice walk just with your family, go down to a restaurant like Hennessy's or the other 50,000 places that are down there, and you will absolutely love Paseo de Mateo. If you ask where it is, everybody's going to know where it is, but that's definitely a place that you should visit. Now, next are the Parque. So Parque is park, and in all of Merida, you will see that every single neighborhood has its park. The one that's closest to me, we'll talk about it in just a second, but there are two that I think are very important for very different reasons. Now, the first one is Parque de Santa Lucia. Now, this is a great place to like take pictures. I have several of them on my Instagram where it's just beautiful. They got all kinds of different buildings. But the biggest thing is it is not only a picturesque place, it is also a wonderful place to go if you're looking for restaurants. And if you're trying to like Airbnb a house or look for a hotel, I always tell people, look at Parque de Santa Lucia. And if you're around there, you're in the perfect part of the city because you're just north of Plaza Grande. You're just south of some of the newer but still kind of colonial areas, but you're in a great location for food, for drinks, and again, 
for pictures and just the rest of the town is right there for you. Parque de Santa Ana is different as well. Now, I'm going to try to pronounce this word right, but there is a beautiful cathedral, which I believe they call Parroquia de Santa Ana. If I got that wrong, I apologize. But it is probably the second most photographed cathedral in Merida. But the most important thing about Santa Ana is not only does it have the beautiful cathedral and they built a nice park next to it, it also is truly what most people believe to be the area where you see the old part of Merida from there to Plaza Grande and anything outside of it is what is considered the newer part of Merida. So the border between old and new, the nice picturesque circumstance, it's normally pretty vacant at night, so you can get some great pictures, that kind of thing. But I would absolutely say Parque de Santa Lucia, Parque de Santa Ana, you're going to be very happy with where you are. And speaking of those, as I said before, I have one that's very close to me called Parque de la Maharada, and it's not a crazy Easy, nice park, but it's just a nice open green space where people are there. Most of the time you'll see a school's like drumline or band or whatever it might be working out uh, their patterns or whatnot on the square. But it's just a nice little place. There's a nice little uh, coffee bar, ice cream place. It's a nice area and it's close to our house. So of course, like I'm going to call that one of my favorites. But the one that you should really think about is Parque de la Plancha or Grand Parque de la Plancha. And the reason for that is they are currently constructing this. Now this used to be kind of the railroad museum, this kind of big big empty space with nothing going on but now they are completely renovating it. It is actually very close to where we are, so I'm of course very excited about it, but it is, I believe they're investing 1 billion pesos into this project, which is outstanding and it's looking beautiful. You see the construction day by day. It is going to be an absolutely amazing place. And I've done a few YouTube shorts on it and that kind of thing, but if you're thinking about going to Medellin, Mexico, the one thing you might wanna think about is, as this park progresses and it looks like it's gonna be done about the end of 2023, maybe get a little closer to there, but it is also gonna be the place that allows you to take a tram from there over to the Merida stop for the Mayan train, something that again is coming hopefully very soon. Now, Calle 60 is another one, and Calle 60 is kind of what I consider the little brother of Paseo de Mateo. It's a great street, but it's not a boulevard. It's not real special looking. There are very, there are a couple, but not very many big houses there, but it is a street that you should absolutely travel down because it is one that goes south enough, unlike Paseo de Mateo, all the way to Plaza Grande, and it is on the west side of that street. So from there, if you just take it north, you can go all all the way north and see all kinds of restaurants, boutiques, shops, bars, anything that you could possibly want. If you're trying to do like a, I don't want to say a tourist trap thing, but if you want to actually see the market area, Calle 60 is absolutely amazing. And when you get to the top before you have to turn either way, you get to Paseo 60, which is an absolutely wonderful little commercial establishment. They've got a hotel right there, but they also have just a ton of open air restaurants that I would absolutely recommend, especially one like Crabster. And if you haven't seen any of those, again, check out the other videos on this channel. Calle 60 is a really nice street that isn't talked about very very often, but it has all of the kind of touristy shopping vibes that you could possibly want. And this next one, this is purely for the gringos, I gotta tell you. And this is one that you will hear about down there. They call it Gringo Corner or the, they have all kinds of names for it, but it is the Merida English Library. Now, if you say that, pretty much everybody in the city is gonna be able to point you in the right direction to this place. This is because a lot of people that look like me decide to go down there and that's, there's a reason for that. They have events, classes, all kinds of social gatherings going on there because it is definitely definitely an expat friendly place. And if you want to join there, what I will tell you is go to this website, which is meditaenglishlibrary.com slash membership. And the membership is actually very cheap. It's 500 pesos for an entire family. It is 400 pesos per individual. That is on their website, which I'll put a link down in the description below as well. But if you join that, you join an absolutely amazing thing and they depend on people's donations there. So you're doing a great thing for the community as well. But this is where a lot of people take Spanish classes. This is where a lot of people go in and buy books that are both Spanish and English so they can kind of learn and pick up things and it is 100% in my opinion purely a gringo thing for this channel to say if you're going down there check out Plaza Grande check out Paseo de Mateo walk Calle 60 but stop into that Merida English Library I think you're going to be able to really enjoy it and again guys there are so many different things there are a couple of zoos we've been to one I have hilarious stories about that one you can go to the north side which has all kinds of different malls and Costco like kind of the the normal things that make it a little bit easier to live in Merida as opposed to some other communities where you've got Walmart Costco um Texas Roadhouse, malls, all kinds of different things. That's gonna be kind of on the north side. It's a little bit more modern. It's not quite as colonial, but all of those places, plus the museums and everything else, they are wonderful to visit and are absolutely fantastic to see. But when I think about the things that you have to see, if you were just to go down there for a weekend, those are the ones that I mentioned. Now, on top of that, you've also got the day trip. So you go to Progreso, Tel Chac Puerto, which are cities along the Gulf of Mexico. You also have beaches that are a little bit further away like Cisal. And on top of that, Merida also has things like 
the ruins at Ushmal and Chichen Itza, places where everybody in the entire world knows because they're UNESCO World Heritage Sites, and all kinds of cenotes, thousands of cenotes, but I personally would recommend the cenotes of Santa Barbara. I thought they were absolutely amazing. And the thing that I wanted to tell you at the very beginning, so we're about to finish up this episode, but please stick around because I do want to say that one thing that I have to deal with and one thing that I kind of go through with, and especially when I talk to people that are a part of my Facebook group, facebook.com slash group slash travel, the number two Merida, again, travel the number two Merida on Facebook. But one of the things that I talk about a lot is I kind of have this, I don't want to say guilt, but I want to give back to the community and I found a wonderful organization and it is the Food Bank of Merida, Mexico. And I'm again going to put a link down in the description below, but if you want to check it out, it is bamxmedida.org. Dot MX. And all you have to do is go to the top right, click donate. You can read all kinds of different things about it. But basically, they try to take from grocery stores. They try to, you know, take donations like what we give and that kind of thing and bring it all in and serve the underserved communities in the city. I think that's a wonderful mission. It's a place that I am invested in at this point, And I really hope that you do. I get nothing from it. But as far as like trying to give back, they've, you know, given me a reason to have a YouTube channel. They've given me a reason to have a home down there. I think it's a wonderful organization to give back to. So again, I'll put the link down in the description below. You can give $2, you can give $5, you can give $5,000. I think it's great for you. So again, my name is Alexander Howell. This is my YouTube channel. Feel free to visit me at any of the stuff down below at Alexander from KC is where you can mainly follow me on Instagram, especially that's probably going to be a pretty cool one to do in the next couple of months because I'm going to be posting while I'm down there, all kinds of pictures and videos and shorts and reels and stuff like that. So at Alexander from KC, like Kansas city, and uh, you'll be able to follow me. My text number is 816-727-7740. And my email is Alexander at Alexander Howell. If you have a long question, email, short question, send me a text, all good to go. And last but certainly not least, I want to thank the members of this channel. You'll notice that there is a membership icon down below. If you do want to become a member, that's awesome. And also the patrons of this channel. My Patreon link is down below. Again, Alexander from KC. I've had a couple added recently, and I just want to say thank you so much for helping to promote this channel. It means a lot to me and uh, a lot to producing this content. So thank you so much and have a wonderful day. And as always... Peace.